again, my name is Angela. I'm with the Zero API support team. And today I'm going to go over part two of our two part series on tax in the Zero API. Now, in the last video, we covered how tax is calculated in Zero and how tax inclusive invoices work. And in this video, we're going to go over what tax rate gets used, how to know what tax rates are available, how to know when you're allowed to use those rates, and also how to set the actual tax amount on some transactions. Now, let's just jump right in and the first thing we're going to go over is what tax rate gets used. Zero only uses two different options as far as which rate. Either you tell us which rate to use or you let us pick. Let's go ahead and go over the first which is the simplest as far as you let us pick. Now to show you how this works I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice real quick using our API Previewer. Again it's a tool that you can use to run ad hoc queries and see exactly what we're going to do before having to code anything so you definitely want to use it. And so we'll just go under invoices, paste in the minimum amount that you really need to create an invoice. And you can see on here there's no information about tax listed involved, even though zero does require tax to be as part of the invoice. But when I go ahead and click run, when you scroll down, you'll see that tax type of output has been applied and a tax amount of $10 showing that this is a 10% rate. So where did we pull that rate from? It sometimes might seem like it's random, but it's really not. Where we pulled that from is from the account code. In Zero, when you set up accounts, we require you to specify a default tax rate. Every single account has its own default tax rate. If you don't tell us which tax rate to use on your call through the API, we're going to use the default on the account that's on that line item. Now you might get some of your clients questioning, why are you using that? Why aren't you using the one I have on my contact? I have tax set up on my contact. Or even better, why aren't you using the one set up on my inventory item? You're using my unit price, you're using my account code on my inventory item, you're using my description. Why aren't you using the tax rate? Again, we just, the Zero API keeps this really simple. The only option is if you don't tell us what rate to use, we're going to use that default rate that's listed on the account code. Now you're probably wondering, well, if they don't want me to just use the default account code, how do I go ahead and set my own rate? And the way to do that's actually quite simple. All you need to do is just add the extra line of tax type in there. This is where you tell us which rate to use. So you see I've gone ahead and added that into my call. And now when I scroll down, you'll see that instead of $10 charged, it's now zero. It's applied my 0% rate. The trick here is knowing what rates are available. As you see, every main zero region, we've got Australia, New Zealand, United States, UK, South Africa, Singapore, the list keeps growing has its own unique set of system-defined rates. In addition to that, users are allowed to create as many different rates as they would like to meet their own tax authority needs. Some U.S. companies you'll see have hundreds of rates. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look and make sure what rates are available for that organization before you send a tax rate. The way that you do that is by doing a get on tax rates. So now I'll just do a quick get on tax rate so you can see exactly what it is that we return because there is a lot of information. The first thing we have is this name. That's the common name for it. We've got like BAS excluded, GST free capital, add on income, things like that. Then the next is tax type. Tax type is a defined code that zero assigns to the tax rate and is the code that you'll be sending along to specify which tax rate you want to use. Just as a little side trivia, you can actually tell whether it's a user-defined rate or a system rate by that because user-defined rates have this tax at the very beginning of it, where system-defined rates don't. You'll also see on here tax rate, and there's two different things here. There's a display tax rate and effective rate. Normally, display tax rate and effective rate are the same, but we do allow for users to have one tax component that's compounded, which means that it gets applied after the other tax components already been applied. So like in this case, I have a 15% tax rate that's not compounded, another 5%. When you add the 5% onto the 15, the effective rate is 20.75%. So it's not something you'll come across very often, but it is something to keep in mind. Another thing you'll have on here is report tax type. This is also a zero only used field, though it is something that you have to specify if you're creating tax rates because what this does is it tells us what different account types this rate can be applied to. Now, knowing what different accounts that rate can be applied to is extremely important. Zero has to restrict which accounts can be used with rich tax types in order to be able to properly create the tax forms for our different regions. 
each of the different regions have their own different rules as far as what tax rates can be used with what kinds of uh, transactions. And so we have to make sure that we honor that so that we can give proper tax information. If you try to send a transaction that has a line item coded to, say, a revenue account, and you use a tax type that is not allowed to be used with revenue accounts, then it's going to ge generate a error that'll stop that transaction from being created. It'll say a tax type code can't be used with that account code. This actually is rather common. And you might think that when you're having your users choose which uh, tax rates to map to your tax rates, that they'll know exactly which ones to use. But unfortunately, this really isn't the case. Usually users aren't sure which kinds of uh, restrictions there are on the different tax rates they have. Because of this, what we recommend is that you help them out and restrict it for them, which is something that we do on our invoices. So like here in my invoice creation screen, if I go ahead and choose my sales account that I've been using, and look at my tax rates, you'll see I have far fewer tax rates here than what I had previously. If I choose a different account type and click into here, I've got a different list of rates. And this is something that you can create in your own integration. When you do a get of accounts, you'll see what account type it is. You have your user fill out what account they want things coded to first. Then you can go ahead and check that against a get on tax rates, see which tax rates are available, and only present that as an option. So it can take a second in order to run that get, but it'll make the experience that much better when the user is using your integration and they're able to map the tax rates correctly the first time. So as a quick recap, we now know that if you don't specify a tax rate, Zero is gonna use the default tax rate on the account that you've coded to that line item, and that you can see all sorts of information when you do a get on your tax rates, including the different restrictions on the tax rates that show you that only certain account types can be used with certain tax rates. Now there's one last thing that you can specify that a lot of developers like to use, maybe not a lot, but at least some developers will use because of how Xero calculates tax. As you've learned from the last video, Xero calculates tax on a line item basis. So if you have one line item for $10, a second line item for $10, will calculate tax each on those separately and add the total together. This can cause some rounding concerns if your system happens to add everything up and just apply that tax to the total of $20. One way that you can get over this and overcome this is by specifying the actual tax amount when you're sending your invoice, bill, or credit note. So to show you how this works, let's go back to API Previewer and we'll just put in our code again, but we'll add one additional field. We now have tax amount field. So if you remember last time we have tax type BAS excluded, it should be a 0% rate, but this time I'm telling it to add in $10 as a tax amount. When I go ahead and run that and scroll down, you'll see that Zero has used this. I've now got an invoice of $100 is my total of my invoice, a tax amount of $10, even though my rate is 0%. So this is a very powerful tool, but it is something that you have to be a bit careful on. Is let me go ahead and take a look at this invoice when I am in Zero itself. So looking at the invoice, you'll see here I've got my $100 invoice. It's got my BAS excluded tax rate. You'll also see here that it now has GST listed as 0% because that's the name of the rate, but it has $10. And we've also got this includes adjustment to tax box. What this is, it's an informational field where Zero lets the user know the difference between what Zero would have calculated for that tax rate and what's actually being used on the invoice for tax. Now this is a great check. It's not unusual to have a couple of cents in here, especially if you're using it for rounding like we are talking about before. But if you see a large number, like my $10 here, you'll see that as a red flag that there's a problem that most likely the wrong tax rate is being used and that you'll need to either have your user choose a different tax rate or if they don't have a rate in zero that matches the rate that you're using, they'll need to create one in order to correct the problem. Some quick caveats on sending tax amount. It is only available on the invoices endpoint and the credit notes endpoint. It's not available on anything else. So if you try to send a different tax amount on say bank transactions or receipts or basically anything else, you're gonna get an error. In addition to that, you're allowed to send tax amount on tax-inclusive invoices, but the Zero UI does not support this. 
So what that means is since the zero UI doesn't support it, as soon as anyone goes to a edit invoice page, zero is going to overwrite the amount that you sent with the amount that zero calculates. So considering the fact that the draft invoice page where users go in to click and look at draft invoices is by default an edit page, that can cause a major headache and lots of confusion. So you don't want to use this when you're sending across tax inclusive invoices. So here we are, we made it. This concludes our two part series on tax and the Zero API. And now you know how Zero determines what tax rate to use, how to read the information we return on a get for tax rates, how to know which rates you can use on what accounts, and how to specify a tax amount. If you have any further questions, please go ahead and check out our developer center at developer.zero.com or our community at community.zero.com slash developer. So thanks for watching and as always, stay awesome.